Chance? Rispa. Uh, good. Hopefully some of you are going, I've never heard of Rispa. That's a good thing, right? Uh, that's, that means this will be new. Um, before I tell you about Rispa, let me kind of back up a little bit. This was around the time King Saul had been king, and he had been making some pretty bad choices as king. And one of the bad choices he made was he wanted the Gibeonites, the Gibeonite people, killed. And he had a lot of the Gibeonites slaughtered. Well, after King Saul passed away, David became king, and David wanted to make things right with the king of Gibeon. And so he went to the king of Gibeon, and he says, what can we do to make this right? And the king of Gibeon said, we don't want gold, we don't want silver. What we want are seven descendants of King Saul. So King David said, all right, I'll give you seven descendants of King Saul. Of those seven descendants, two of them were two men who were the sons of a woman named Rispa. Rispa was one of the concubines of King Saul. Now these seven individuals, the Gibeonites, this was their culture, their tradition. They took these seven individuals and they executed them by hanging. And their tradition was that when they hung people and executed them like that, they did not take the bodies down until the harvest rains came. And that could last days, weeks, sometimes even months. A lot of biblical historians, they say that these seven individuals particularly probably hung there about six months before the harvest rains came, and those bodies finally came down. And we'll talk about that in, in a minute. But during that time, while those bodies hung there, there's a mama named Rispa who's absolutely heartbroken because her two sons have been put to death. And she never leaves their side. In 2 Samuel chapter 21, it says beginning in verse 10, Rispa, the daughter of Ai, took sackcloth and she spread it for herself on the rock from the beginning of harvest until it rained on them from the sky. And she allowed neither the birds of the sky to rest on them by day nor the beasts of the field by night. As those seven bodies hung there, dead bodies, executed. Executed for the only reason being a descendant of Saul. Everybody's gone but this mama. This mama who two of her sons are still hanging there, and she's going to go further and do more than anyone else would have possibly done. And you see her love, you see her heart, as she's willing to do so much for her sons. Man, what a blessing it is to have a mama, to have a grandmama, to be that mama, to be that grandmama who has and displays that type of unconditional love that goes further and sacrifices more than anyone else. And how blessed we are, man. If we had a mama in our life who stood by our side and who loved us more than anyone else could love us, if we had a mama in our life who loved us and believed in us, maybe sometimes more than we even believed in ourselves. And if we had a mama who stood by us and taught us righteousness and taught us to follow the ways of God, if we had a mama or a grandmama in our life who said, you will say please and thank you, and you will say yes ma'am and no ma'am, and you will respect those who are older than you. If we had a mama in our life like that, or if we have been that mama, man, that is such a blessing. Because, again, that's a love and a sacrificial love that goes so much further and makes such a, a lasting impact on so many. But, but that love, it didn't just end there. That was her loving heart. But you also see her very, very protective hands as she guarded the bodies of these two sons of hers. The Bible says that she took her sackcloth. Her sackcloth would have been basically her outer garment that she would have been wearing because she was in mourning. And in a better translation here would be that she actually used it as shade over the rock. So here she takes her outer garment, she takes this sackcloth that she's wearing, and, and she makes a shade, she makes some type of tent for herself. Can you imagine the heat? Can you imagine how hot it would have been? Can you imagine how dusty it must have been? Can you imagine this, this woman on this rock, possibly beneath the bodies of her son? just trying to create a little bit of shade, trying to protect herself as she's trying to protect those whom she loves so much. If you're a mama, if you're a grandmama, if you really want to protect your children, if you really want to protect your grandchildren, you have to start with yourself. You cannot give from an empty cup. So how are you and the Lord doing? How is your spiritual life? Is your spiritual life strong enough 
that you are able to provide for your children or for your grandchildren the way they so desperately need and desire. Because again, you can't give that which you don't have. Can you imagine though seeing Rispa? Can you imagine her seeing her and watching her as she is protecting the lifeless bodies of her two sons? Can you, can you think for just a moment and, and maybe imagine her, whether it's with sticks or with rocks or just trying to shoo away the birds of the air, the birds that are continually coming in, trying to feed on the carcasses of her two sons? Can you imagine her doing that all day long? What a constant job that must have been, trying to shoo those birds away. And then night would come, and she knew every day night was going to come. And when night came, there didn't come rest. There came the beast of the field. And so now as night comes, now she's protecting those two lifeless bodies of her sons from the beast of the field. So here this mother is, protecting by day from the birds of the air, protecting by night the bodies of her sons from the beast of the field. Man, what a mama. What a mama who was willing and courageous to protect. As mamas, you have great courage. You have courage that is oftentimes uh, unappreciated. Because it takes great courage, mama. It takes great courage to stand up to your children and say, I want to know where you're going tonight. I want to know who you're going to be with. And I want to know, actually, I want to tell you when you're going to be back. You see, that's courageous to do that. And I'm so appreciative of mamas who have and who continue to stand their ground to protect their children because there are so many things in this world that you and I both know can harm them. And you're just trying to protect them. You're trying to protect them often from themselves and from those, those beasts that are in this world. You have the courage to stand up, to not give up, to not give in. Because you know that there are predators that are out there. And you are very well aware of what those predators, whether they be physical or spiritual, could do to your child. And so you continue to protect them. And if you had a mama who protected you in that way, if you had a grandmama who protected you in that way, then they deserve honor. And they deserve praise. And they should be given thanks. Can you think about her eyes for a second? Can you think about the eyes of Rispa? Think about the bags that must have been under her sleepless eyes. Think about how bloodshot those eyes must have been. Think about the, the stress and the pain and the agony. You know, they tell us that the eyes are the wind of the soul. Can you imagine if you were to look into the eyes of this mother, what her eyes would have revealed about her soul? The love, again, an undying love that she has for her two sons. A willingness to, to love more and to go further than anyone else would have ever done. When I think of mama's eyes, I think of eyes that are open. Always open. Not only these eyes, but eyes on the back of the head, eyes all over the place. Mama's eyes, they just seem to always know. Mama's eyes are open all night long as they take care of their babies when they're infants. And mama's eyes are open all night long those nights that maybe we stay out and break curfew when we know we shouldn't. And you say, well, mama's eyes were only open because she was angry. No, they were open because she wanted to make sure you got home safe. Then you would know that she was angry, right? But mama's <laughs> eyes were still open and forever open. Mama's eyes are open every single day, making sure that everything that needs to get done gets done. So thank you, mama. Thank you for having those kind of eyes that are, that are open to this life and, and open to loving us the way that we so desperately need to be loved. When I think about Rispa, and I think about this particular account in Scripture, and I, I wonder if I were to have seen her and if I would have approached her, I can't help but think my reaction, my human reaction would have been, ma'am, I'm so sorry that your sons are gone. But they're gone. And, and there's nothing you can do for them. I'm so sorry. And I can imagine her response. Now that I know this story, I can imagine her having tear-filled eyes, looking me right in my eyes and saying, I will stay with my sons until they have the dignity of a proper burial. And I will protect my sons until the end. 
Word got back, by the way, about Rispin to King David. And there were people who went back to David and said, Hey, King, have you heard about Rispa, this mother of two of the seven that were executed? And they told him about what she was doing. And, of course, David greatly appreciated the love that this mother was showing, the, the sacrificial, undying love that this mama had. And so he made sure that all seven of those who had been executed, their bodies were taken down. They received a, a proper and honorable burial. And then Rispa could go home. She could go home because she knew at that point that as a mom, she had done everything she could do. She had loved like no one else. She had gone further than anyone else would have. She showed a sacrificial love. She showed a very real love. She showed a heart full of love. She showed hands that protected. She shows eyes full of love, full of stress, full of worry. We've had mamas like that in our life. We've had grandmamas in our life. If we've had aunties, if we've had anyone in our life like that, we should be so thankful. And if you, and I know many of you are those mamas, thank you. And if no one else has ever recognized you or told you before how much we appreciate what you've done, I just want you to know that you are appreciated.